Welcome back to Praxis Test Prep. If you're new here, we're all about helping you pass your teacher certification exams with ease and confidence. If you would like to join our community of educators, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on our test taking tips and strategies. Also, feel free to comment down below with any questions that we haven't yet answered in our video series. Today, we're covering the Praxis Elementary Math Exam. That's test code 7003. If that's a test that you need to pass, then good news. My name is Cleo. I am a longtime tutor and a test prep expert here with study.com, and I'm going to help you and walk you through everything that you need to know in this video. We're going to cover everything that's on the test, how best to prepare, and my top five strategy tips so that you are ready for test day. Ready? Let's jump in. First things first, let's start with the basics. Praxis 703 is designed for prospective teachers of K through six elementary school grades. This exam is an update on Praxis 5003, which is an older exam. As of 2024, some test takers should still take 5003 and others should take 7003. It depends on your state and the requirements for your state. Study.com and our Praxis Test Prep channel have informational and prep videos for both Praxis 5003 and 7003. If you're not sure which exam you should take, pause this video and go to praxis.ets.org slash state hyphen requirements to see the exact requirements for your state. Come back when you're ready. Okay, back to Praxis 7003. The questions on this exam focus on a broad knowledge of mathematics and related competencies necessary to effectively teach mathematics at the elementary school level. Test topics include numbers, operations, algebraic thinking, geometry and measurement, statistics, probability. So how long is the test and how is it scored? Praxis 7003 gives you 55 minutes to answer 40 questions. This gives you about one minute and 22 seconds per question. You'll probably answer some questions much faster than others, but others might take longer to work out. So strategy tip number one, aim to spend one minute per question so that you have some cushion for the harder questions. And strategy tip number two, skip questions if they're taking a long time. You can always come back to them later if you have time at the end, but you don't want to eat up all your time on a hard question early on. And remember, there's no penalty for wrong answers on the praxis, so you're always better off guessing than leaving a question blank. If you've skipped questions, make sure to go back to them before time is up and make your best guess. Nearly every question that you see on Praxis 7003 will be multiple choice. These do come in a couple of different flavors though. Most notably, single choice questions where only one answer is correct, as well as multiple choice questions where there may be multiple correct answers. The test will always signal this with language at the end of the question, such as select all that apply. So make sure to read each question carefully. You will also be asked to complete a few numeric entry questions. These are questions where no answer choices are given and instead you're asked to solve an equation or other mathematical problem and then manually input your answer into a numeric entry box on screen. For all question types, Always find the exact answer unless the question uses clue words like approximately or asks you to round the answer. For the numeric entry, make sure to enter the exact answer, but don't worry about trying to guess what format you should write it in. The exam allows for different ways to write the number, so 1.5 and 1.50 would both be counted as correct answers. You'll have access to an on-screen calculator during the test, a scientific calculator. So please note that you have to use the calculator provided and you can't bring your own. So strategy tip number three, practicing with the calculator is just as important as reviewing material and doing practice questions. You can practice using the calculator on the ETS website or check our channel for a video tutorial on the calculator. Here are a few tips for using the calculator. Remember to read the question carefully. The answer on the calculator may not be the final answer to the question. Make sure you're in the correct mode and don't round immediate calculations. Rounding too early could lead you to the wrong answer. So we've covered the basics. Now let's dive into some test specifics and what to expect from the individual questions themselves. 
Praxis 7003 is split into three main content categories. Each will include roughly the same amount of questions, so it's important that you get comfortable with all three. The first category covers numbers and operations. You can expect roughly 16 questions in this category, or 40% of the exam. These questions will focus on your ability to understand and manipulate numbers. This includes understanding the place value system and working with decimals, as well as being able to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division to solve multi-step mathematical problems. You should also be comfortable working with different mathematical notations, such as fractions and percents, and be familiar with different numerical categories, such as rational, prime, or whole numbers. A sample question might be, what is the sum of the following expression? One third plus one sixth plus one twelfth. The second category covers algebraic thinking. You can expect roughly 12 questions in this category or 30% of the exam. These questions will largely focus on your ability to manipulate and solve algebraic expressions, equations, and formulas. Put more simply, you should be comfortable solving for X. You should also be familiar with inequalities and have a basic sense of how to graph different equations on a number line or an XY graph. And you should also be able to define key algebraic terms, such as independent versus dependent variables. A sample question might be, simplify the following expression, the quantity 4x plus 5y plus 2 times the quantity 3x minus 2y. The third and final category covers geometry and measurement, data, statistics, and probability. You can expect roughly 12 questions in this category, or 30% of the exam. These questions tackle a number of different mathematical areas, but the good news is that you will only face two or three of each. For geometry, you should be comfortable with one, two, and three-dimensional figures, and be able to solve problems around perimeter, area, or volume for each. You should also be familiar with basic graphs and the key components of a coordinate plane. For data and statistics, you should be comfortable with basic statistical concepts such as mean, median, or mode, as well as able to describe and interpret a set of data. For probability, you should be familiar with basic concepts around the likelihood of occurrence. A sample probability question might be, you have a standard deck of 52 cards, you draw the first card, and it is the 10 of diamonds. What are the odds that the next card you draw is a diamond? The first and most important step in preparing for the Praxis Elementary exam is to learn about what the test looks like and what's on it. Good news, you just did that. My fourth strategy tip will help you get started on your preparation. I recommend that you take a full length practice test to assess your strengths and weaknesses. That may feel like a daunting way to start, but this way you get an immediate feel for where you need to focus your studying. The result of your practice test will also highlight any areas where you may want to go back and brush up on some foundational concepts. And don't stress about your score on the first one, right? It's just a starting point to help you focus your studies. If you don't know where to get an authentic full-length practice test, I recommend checking out one of study.com's Praxis Test Prep courses. Every Praxis course starts with a diagnostic test that does all the scoring and prioritization work for you. Also, all of the questions are designed to mimic the style and difficulty of the questions you can expect to face on the official test day. And you can even turn on a timer to simulate the time constraints. So by starting here, you're already getting yourself accustomed to the feel of the real thing. As you're preparing, make sure you pay attention to vocabulary and concepts like hexagon, commutative property of addition, and prime factors. You'll be expected to recognize and answer questions about these concepts on the test. The best way to really master everything you need to know is practice, 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 which is my fifth strategy tip. Repeated practice will help math operations become second nature and make it easy for you to quickly recall what the commutative property is. Study.com has a large question bank that you can use for repeated practice. And there you have it, my top five strategy tips for passing the Praxis 7003 elementary math exam. If you're looking for more test prep tips and strategies, check out our other videos. We're adding more videos to this channel every week as we tackle more of your questions. So don't forget to head over to study.com and consider one of our comprehensive Praxis test prep courses. Happy studying 
and we'll see you in the next video.